All right. If I, I tell you, it's been an evening with regards to technical issues and so on. So I think we've figured it out now. So we're going to try this again. Could somebody give me, who has my cell phone number, a quick text and let me know that you could hear me. If you're online right now, let me know that you can hear me because I'm going to, we're going to go ahead with prayer meeting. It's only been 45 minutes late, but uh, it looks like we are on now. So I appreciate your your patience during this time. So just give me one moment. Thank you, Vincent. All right. So, all right. Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry that um, we are starting late tonight. Um, Facebook changed some things. There was a little bit of an issue there, uh, not connecting with my webcam and everything there. So I apologize about that. But greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm glad to be with you tonight. And uh, I must say, just before we get started, we live in such a beautiful area of trees and all the changing leaves. I mean, driving home earlier, it was just so amazing to be able to see all of the colors that the Lord has given us. Um, and so, good evening. My name is Don Mast. I'm with Alpine First Southern Baptist Church right here in uh, 903 North 4th Street in Juniata. And I welcome you to Wednesday Night Prayer Meeting. And I'm thankful that you're here with me. It's a privilege to serve the church and to serve God. And so, if you're new to Wednesday Prayer Meeting, each week I share a short lesson from the Word of God, and then we pray. And I'm not here to itch your ears or to make you feel comfortable, but I'm here to challenge you. And I'm glad that you're here with me tonight. So, prayer meeting really does help you to stay in the Word of God and to draw you near to Him. I think it's James 4. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So every day, do something, read the word, be in the word, be in prayer, and it'll lead you closer to God. So quick announcement. God has blessed our church in so many ways this year. We have a gift that is going to help us to replace our old ramp in the front of our church making us more safe as we approach the winter months. Also, we are getting a new sign to welcome people. And, you know, I tell you, amazing things are happening here. I'm so thankful for every family and our friends who are with us with our church. We are so thankful for your gifts and your prayers. And so, tonight, it is on my heart the, this specific topic is on my heart tonight that, you know, I need to share. And we need to be sharing Jesus with those we encounter every day. And so, like, my prayer is for us to ask the Lord to, you know what, guide me as I choose to, you know, to live a life that, that, that shows others what a relationship with Jesus looks like. My goal is to lead others to know Jesus, and, and I hope that, that you feel that way as well. Um, so even though we had some technical issues tonight, no one's going to stop us. So when, when talking about prayer, when talking about prayer meetings specifically, I had a discussion this week, and a question came up. How do you know God even hears your prayers? Or, you know what, God, is he even answering your prayers? He's not answering all of your prayers. And they said, I don't think he does answer all your prayers. And so that's where we begin tonight. This person said, sometimes it is as if he's turned a deaf ear to me. And I'm beginning to wonder if it's even worthwhile praying. Here's my answer. One reason that we know God hears our prayers is because he promised to hear them. Even if he doesn't always answer them the way that we think he should, he still hears us. 
the psalmist declared, Ask, As for me, I call to God, and he hears my voice. That's Psalm 55, Psalm 55, that's verses 16 to 17. So why then does God sometimes seem deaf to our prayers? One reason may be because we've allowed sin to take root in our heart. And sin always cuts us off from God. It may be anger or hatred or unforgiveness or prejudice or an unclean habit or anything else that we've allowed to really pollute our souls. So often, however, God doesn't answer our prayers the way we think he should because he loves us. And he knows that he has our best interest. You know, he knows what's best for us. And it's often been said that God answers prayer in one of three ways. Yes, no, and wait. And that's true. We see only part of the picture or pieces of the puzzle. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. But God sees the whole way through. His whole plan. This is why that we must seek God's will when we pray and not just our own will. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, we have what we asked for. That's 1 John 5, verses 14 to 15. So don't be discouraged. Instead... Thank God for his love and for his love of you, okay, and learn to commit everything to him in prayer. The Bible says rejoice always, pray continually. That's Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 17. So today we're going to, so today we're going to kind of talk about puzzle pieces, piece by piece, and we may not see the big picture for our life, but God does. And, you know, so I ask the question tonight. Does it seem or, or, or you know, does it sometimes feel as though your life is a mess? Kind of like the technology here earlier. Uh, you know, like scattered puzzle pieces. Each situation seems to be an isolated event with no connection to what's happening previously or what could occur in the future. And some pieces are beautiful moments of joy and a blessing and contentment, but others are dark and painful. Perhaps you wonder why God allows these events or why he doesn't intervene and relieve your suffering. We can't see what the picture will be once the puzzle is assembled, okay? God knows exactly how each puzzle piece is going to fit together. Everything's going to fit together. When our situation looks hopeless, this is our comfort. That the holy, perfect, all-knowing God is sovereign over everything in our life. Psalm 103, verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rolls over all. So what that's saying is that nothing is random or meaningless when you belong to him. The story of Joseph is a great example of God's uh, omnipotent hand working in and through every situation. I think it's Genesis 37, uh, verses 39 through 50. And by reading it, when you read it, I encourage you to take a look at it this evening. We learn four essential truths about the Lord and his sovereignty. So I encourage you to open your Bible to Genesis Chapter 37, verses 39 and 50. God is always with us. God, Joseph was hated by ten, by his ten older brothers because he was the favorite son. 
When an opportunity arose to get rid of him, they sold him to a caravan of traders and told their father that he'd been killed by a wild animal. I mean, think about that. The dramatic turn of events could easily have caused Joseph to feel forgotten by God, but throughout this various number of trials, one thing was constant. And that was the Lord was with Joseph. And you can find that in Genesis 39, verse 2, and then uh, I think it's, yeah, verse 2, and then also Genesis um, 39, and that's also uh, verse 21. So look at verse 2 and verse 21 in Genesis 39. And you'll see where it says the Lord was with Joseph. And like him, we never walk through any situation alone. At the moment of our salvation, the Holy Spirit comes to live within us and seals us as God's child. Ephesians 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. When you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed in him, you were also sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. He's with us in every circumstance, whether we feel his presence or not. This is a truth that we can count on because the Lord always keeps his word. And God has a purpose for everything, for everything that we're involved in. Joseph only had 17. He was only 17. I'm sorry. Joseph was only 17 years old when his ordeals really began. And he didn't, these ordeals didn't end until he was, I think, in his 30s. That's 13 years of unexplained hardship and suffering. But the Lord knew exactly what was required to prepare Joseph for his future as governor of Egypt, a position that made him second in authority to Pharaoh. God is sovereign over everything everything in our life nothing is random or meaningless when we belong to him i mean what seems random or you know and even unfair events were the very things that god orchestrated to achieve his purpose he used the father's favoritism and brother's hatred to move joseph from canaan to egypt as a slave and prisoner, Joseph learned the skills required to wisely rule over a prosperous and powerful nation. God used Pharaoh's dream and its interpretations not only to rescue his servants from prison, but also to provide enough food to preserve a nation and to save Joseph's family from starvation. Although the events you experience may not be as dramatic as those, these principles still hold true. The Lord has a divine objective for everything that happens in your life. He promises, he promised to cause all things to work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purposes. That's Romans chapter 8 verse 28. So you may not see a reason for what's going on in your life, for what he's doing in your life right now. But you can know this, his purpose is superior to any challenge that you face. And God's perspective, God's perspective is eternal and all-knowing. When Joseph looked back at all the difficult events in his life, he assured his brothers of the Lord's sovereign hand that was at work, even in their mistreatment of him. If you see... If you look at Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, it says, You planned evil against me. God planned it for good to bring about the present result, the survival of many people. But what Joseph couldn't see was God's eternal purpose being worked out, ultimately, for the hope of all humanity. All of that was tied up in these events because Jesus Christ was a descendant of that little group of Hebrews who were transplanted to Egypt and sustained by Joseph. 
You may not see a reason for what God is doing in your life right now, but you can know this. His purpose is superior to all and any challenge that you face today. God is working awesome things for eternal life in your lives. But we can't always understand because our perspective is limited. The Apostle Paul tells us that momentary light affliction is producing for all of us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. So when the troubles of this life weigh us down, we need to shift our focus from the worldly to the eternal. And, you know, the one thing that I shared with this person this week is that God's timing is perfect. Perhaps the most difficult part of Joseph's troubles was their duration. You know, how long these troubles took place. At one point, after correctly interpreting the cupbearer's dream, Joseph saw a glimmer of hope and asked to be remembered to Pharaoh. But after two long years, he was still a prisoner. Why did God delay Joseph's release just when he'd begun to hope again? Haven't we all wondered that at one time or another? It, you know, it looked as though you know the, the Lord was about to intervene, but then nothing happened. It's easier to bear pain if we know the end is near, but when the trials seem endless, we must rely on the wisdom of God's timing. We know exactly what he wants to achieve in our lives and how long it'll take. So instead of wrangling with the Lord over which pieces of the puzzle should go in next and what should fit and what it should look like and worrying about what's ahead, let's learn to accept that he alone knows how all of the events of our lives fit together. We can trust him to choose the right pieces, even in the dark times, even in the dark ones, and, and, and place each one of these pieces exactly where it needs to be according to to his good purposes. So tonight, are you trying to put together all of these puzzle pieces? Are you worried? You don't need to be. You aren't listening tonight by accident or by mistake. You are here tonight to change your life. Friend, are you currently dealing with emptiness? Are you lost tonight in your life? Are you seeking something? Are you confused or you, do you feel uneasy? Is tension creeping into your life or your marriage? Or is there a tug of war between your family, your parents, your kids? Uh, you should, first of all, surround your day and surround your family with prayer. What do you do next? What do you do next? You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Being, or I should say, beginning... A personal relationship with Jesus is key. God has a purpose, as I shared with you. God loves you and wants you to experience an internal peace. You can't change your past, but you can determine your future by deciding for Jesus tonight. A new start awaits. You can change your life, change the way you're living, your habits, your mindset, and surrender to Christ. And you may not have all the power to do this on your own, but you know what? Ask him. Ask him because he can help you to have the power to change and move away from your sins. So tonight, do you want to know joy and rest and peace and security and love? Surrender and commit your life to your life and your heart to Jesus. I guarantee that you can know true peace with God, peace with your soul, peace with your mind, and joy such as you have never experienced. God created us in his image. He gave us a free will and a freedom of choice, and we choose to disobey him sometimes. We choose to disobey and go our own way, and this separates us from God, and there's no bridge that reaches God except for one. 
And Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, and he paid the penalty for our sins and bridged that gap between us and God. God has provided the only way back to him, and we must make a choice. You don't have to be perfect. Through his death on the cross, Jesus took all of your wrongs and gave you all of his rights. If you believe that and you commit to following him and you believe that, you know what, he is who he says he is, your life will never be the same. It's as simple as repenting your sin, declaring that you want to follow Jesus. The Bible says if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's Romans 10, verse 9. So believing in Jesus is the first step on the greatest journey of your life. So here's how you accept Christ into your life. Admit your need, first of all. Admit that you're a sinner. Be willing to turn your life away from sin. Repent. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. And then through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as a Lord and Savior tonight. We can help you. We can pray with you and we can pray for you. But you need to make a decision tonight. We are not promised tomorrow. So in your own words, right now, pray this prayer. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my Savior and I want to follow him as Lord. From this day forward, guide my life and help me to be and to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you made this decision tonight to follow Jesus, or if you still have questions, we'd love to talk with you about it. So stop by our church this Sunday, or simply comment on the message below. You know, Send me a direct message, or send us an email through the church website. We want to help you to take your faith walk to the next step, and we can help you to learn how to follow Jesus. And so let's go ahead and turn to the Lord in prayer. And I encourage you to please add, please take notes of all of those on our prayer list tonight. So please bow your heads and join me. Father in heaven, we do thank you for tonight. We thank you for Jesus and the salvation that you have given us in him. We ask for your blessings tonight as we pray and we share our many praises. And we come to you to pray for our lost and our dying world. Thank you for your direction and your assurance. We thank you, God, that you are good and that you are faithful and that you keep your promises and that you are a defender and that you protect us. Please guard and protect our hearts from the enemy. Please give us the courage and the wisdom and the opportunity to stand up and to tell the world about you. You know what we face every day, Lord, today in our culture, and we are so thankful that we don't have to walk through this life alone, and that we are so thankful that we have you next to us. So fill our hearts today with your love, Lord, with your peace, with your strength, and we thank you, Lord, for always being right by our side and leading and guiding all of us. And so tonight we pray for our church, we pray for our church family, our pastor transition, and our our continued outreach efforts. And Lord, we pray for those who are sick. Lord Father, we come and we and we ask that you pour out your love and your comfort, your peace and your healing to all of our church family and friends who are dealing with medical issues and sickness. You are the great physician. God, you know, give our medical staff wisdom, guide and give our sick and their families ease calm and hope as you mend them lord lay your hands on them and be with them lord be with thaddeus stump for healing be with gwen fisher she's still struggling with the flu be with lord uh, tim davis for his eyes going to pittsburgh and with mari and 
with her son Jose. Be with Harvey Daniels. He was involved in a hit and run accident. Be with Daryl, who is uh, working on uh, a heart, getting a heart transplant, Lord. And Lord, also be with Carrie, who is fighting cancer. Lord, we also pray for Holly and Warren McGee and their family, and we ask for a hedge of protection and for peace and understanding and love. We also pray for Rose Murrow and her family. We pray for Paul and Cindy Johnson and their family and their daughter and their grandkids. Be with Aaron Bomeisel and Daquan and the Bomeisel family and help Daquan with his job, Lord, and help Aaron to get that new career. Be with my friend Rodrigo and his family in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Be with Stuart Wicker and his family in Australia. I pray for Peach and her family and for Rosie and Jimmy and Marlene and Alexis and the, their grandson and her grandson, Hazen. I pray for Gwen and her daughter, Olivia, tonight. Brother Anthony English and his wife, Polly. For Vincent, for his wife, Lillian, with a baby on the way, and his kids. I pray for his businesses. Pray for Christopher Cross. Pray for Cookie and Liz and Rob DiStefano, the entire DiStefano family. For David and Linda. For First Baptist Church of Seward, for Pastor Rex, for Pastor Rick Miller and his family, his wife Heather and, and his kids. Lord, we lift up Lawrence Rissler and his family. And Lord, I lift up my family, my wife, my son Elliot and Becca, the entire Miller family in Texas. Lord, we also ask for continued uh, comfort and peace for Norma as she grieves for George. Lord, we also pray for the Baptist Resource Network, for David Ludwig, for Kent Hunt, and the entire team. I pray for my mom and dad, soften their hearts and encourage and strengthen that relationship. I pray for traveling mercies this week as some of our church friends will be traveling to doctor's appointments and for business. I also pray that you pour out your spirit, Lord, and bring answers to our prayers. I also pray for those families that we might have missed tonight, those who watch our services online. God, you know their names and you know their needs, and we are so thankful for all of your blessings. Father, we pray for our city, for our community, for our local and national leaders, for our court system, our, our fire and our police, our EMS. We pray for our school and our school teachers. Give them wisdom and character and protection and guidance and pray for peace. We pray for peace tonight, Lord. We pray for you to bring peacemakers to places where there is chaos. And consider where you can be and where you can put us, I should say, Lord, as peacemakers. Put us into those settings, Lord. People have wandered so far away from the cross and from the word of God from your word. I pray that you will open their hearts to you. Lord, we pray tonight for our military, for those families in harm's way. We ask you bless their families. Keep the military folks safe tonight as they defend and protect. We pray for our neighborhoods and our church. We pray for our, our neighborhoods around our church. We pray for our, uh, our neighbors over at Penn State Altoona. And most of all, we pray that you would turn the hearts of all in our community, in our neighborhoods, in our city, and in our world to you and your message of salvation. You are where we find true peace. So tonight, Lord, we praise you. And Lord, we are thankful and we praise you for all of your prayers that you have, for all the prayers that you have answered, Lord. God, we love you and we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Join me in saying amen. So finally tonight, if this ministry reach, if it reaches you, first of all, I'm sorry that we were late tonight. We were having some technical issues. But if you were able to watch or listen and would like to help our church to reach lost souls in our community, in our city, and in our country, please consider making a gift or a tithe to help our church grow. You could provide a one-time gift or weekly or however you wish. The gift online, we have a safe website. 
It's a1sbc.org. That's a1sbc.org, and you can uh, hit donate. You can go up, and there's a little donate key there. So in closing, you are welcome to join us this Sunday, Altoona First Southern Baptist Church, 903 North 4th Street in Altoona. So we'll see you on Sunday at 1030 for worship, for singing, for learning, and for praising God. And you can come as you are. Bring a friend and neighbor. We have donuts and orange juice and coffee and all sorts of snacks. So, mighty prayer warrior, you are chosen. You are special. You are loved. May God protect you and guard your heart today and always. We're praying for you. Have a blessed night.